Hey, this is Edwin from Making an Impact, owner of Foxhound Advertising, and I'm just going to jump right into this video, why you hopped in here. This is uh, going to be on a sales qualify qualification checklist for 2023, the number one framework for qualifying leads. And this video is for anybody who uh, you know has struggled with getting quality leads, right? People who can actually buy. And in a moment, I will show how you can actually ensure you're getting inbound leads with actual buying intent. But first, we just got to go through like, if you're experiencing this, you know what it's like to have tire kickers on the phone. If, you, if you're offering a service um, or a higher ticket product, um, people who are just kind of coming in price shopping, you, you know, you might have leads that got lots of objections, um, leads who don't have decision making power if they're, you know, B2B or if it's, you know, husband and wife, it's a, if it's a higher ticket offer. Um, obviously leads who they're very interested. They want what you have. They just don't have the budget. They don't have a way of uh, making it work. Um, or at the end of the day, leads who are interested, who can buy from you, but have some pretty big red flags that, you know, can kind of point, these are going to be nightmare clients who are just going to suck up all of your time um, and just totally, you know, make life miserable for you. Uh, or on top of that, you might be getting like cold, absolutely dead leads that have no urgency to actually buy your product or service. And it can be a mess, a big headache, right? So we all know, you know, how frustrating it is to have the, the folks who are just tire kickers, um, you know, we, or or if they just straight up don't have any money. And if I can find my share screen button here. Um, so, you know, folks like, you know, popping over here, you know, the typical used salesman thing. But, you know, even when you, the reason used salesman has to be so aggressive is because so many people come, pop up and they're just price shopping and everything like that. And that can be a problem, right? If, if it's showing that you are a commodity. Now, one of my earlier uh, videos, I talked about how a real quick solution for getting yourself out of the commodity zone is figuring out what can you do that is different, that is unique, right? That is unique. What can you do that's unique um, that gets you a, a leg up? And I'll, I'll probably do another video fully in depth on that. Um, you know, the, the example I used before was the guys in tuxedos and things like that who were security guards and that got everybody talking and stuff like that. But there's other other ways you, you can do things that are unique um, that will immediately make you cut through. But beyond that, if, if you're struggling to get qualified leads who, number one, they're not going to have tons of objections. Number two, who aren't going to have, you know, empty pockets, um, you know, so it's like, you know, the, the first hurdle is getting people who are interested in you. The second hurdle is getting people who are interested in you who actually have money to spend, right? And the, the easiest solution for this is to create a qualification process. And that's that's what we're going to uh, do today in this video. Um, now, you know, I'm a big proponent of what's called inbound marketing. And inbound marketing very simply means that we've just got some sort of lead magnet or, you know, some sort of free sample or something that we're giving to people. And when they opt in for that, then we ask them to do what we want them to do or a little call to action here, which might be, hey, buy this thing now, sign up for our service and book an appointment, you know, get an estimate. Um, and in the meantime, most people won't do that. So the rest of the people, we when we give them the, the free sample or the lead magnet, whatever we give them, we grab their email or we grab their phone number and we have them on our list. And so then we just keep following up with them and keep telling them, hey, you know, go book that appointment or go buy this thing. Um, super simple. Now, the, the problem, right, is a lot of folks are like, okay, great. I'm getting all sorts of people to my lead magnet here. The issue is they are broke. They have no money or they are these tire kickers. So what do we do? Now, what I like to add is a qualification process. So cue for qualification process. And a qualification process is anything you can stick it after this point. You could stick it, you know, in the middle here. You could even stick it right in front of your lead magnet if you don't want people downloading your lead magnet unless they qualify. And we're going to go through a real quick, you know, two to three point checklist here um, that'll make this super simple. If you're just starting out, I would recommend stick it over here, though, uh, so that you can just get lots of leads and, and you might, you know, find that, hey, if they don't buy this thing, maybe we can make a new new service or a new product. At least you're growing your list over here uh, and you can keep remarketing to people down the road uh, for something that they might be qualified to buy later down the road. Um, but again, if, if you want to be super aggressive, might be more costly on the front end, but you can be super aggressive and qualify people at this stage. Up to you. It's a toss up. 
I can make a video about that down the road. Uh, your qualification process, the checklist that we're going to go through here, the framework that you want to use is just sit back and ask yourself real quickly, if I had to work for free with somebody and only got paid after I delivered the results, right? So they make a bet with me and I say, hey, I'll do this for free. I'll give you this product for free. I'll give you this service for free. You don't pay me until after you are satisfied or until after you get the results that I promised you. What are the two to three things that that person needs to have for you to feel confident making this bet? Now, I got this question um, from Frank Kern. I think Frank Kern got this question from Dean Jackson. Um, but basically, it's like, what are the two to three things that your ideal customer, your ideal prospect needs to have for you to feel like, oh man, we could totally like work for free for this person at first. Cause like, I know I can get them the results. I know they're going to love our product. I know they're going to love our, you know, vegan cookies or what, whatever it is. Like if they've got these two to three things, right. And, and, you know, I've got a marketing agency in our business. Usually it's, you know, we, we had one offer that, um, is using AI and things like that. And so for us, it was like, Hey, number one, if they have a high ticket offer, <laughs> um, number two, they are running paid ads, so Facebook or Google or TikTok. Um, and, and number three, they have at least one other team member who can manage this, uh, who can pilot this AI. Boom. Like we could totally just start, you know, from day one, basically saying like, hey, don't pay us until 30 days from now when you've got a calendar full of booked appointments because we're confident you've got a high ticket offer. You, you, you're you uh, already running paid ads. So we know we, there's going to be enough traffic coming and we, we uh, you, you've got someone who can manage this. So we know that you as the business owner aren't going to be juggling 50 plates. You've already got someone on your team who we can check in with on a weekly basis and make sure that, you know, everything is fine. And, and sure enough, boom, like we, we explode their cash calendars with like 60 appointments uh, a month, you know, like, like that, because they've already got those two or three things. And so that tells us, and, and part of that, you know, if, if you're kind of struggling, like you can, you can think also like, okay, what is it they need uh, in terms of budget? Uh, what is it they need in terms of timeline? Uh, and what is it they need in terms of like resources to actually get the results? So if you're more of a service-based industry, um, obviously like, uh, you know, any sort of like, automobile repair or something like that. Okay. Do they have insurance? Um, you know, what, what kind of carrier do they have? You know, whatever those qualifications are, those two to three things that just like, Hey, these are, these are the basic bare things that someone has to have. Um, so once you, you know, take a second, you know, list that out real quickly, those, those two to three things that is going to be your qualification process, your qualification checklist. And that's going to be an asset you can use forever. So you can use that. Like I said, you could put it right in front of, you know, when they go to download your lead magnet or get your free sample or whatever, you just ask them like, Hey, we really want to give you this awesome thing. Um, real quickly, do you mind telling us if you have X, if you have Y and if you have Z, your, you know, your, your three qualification things here. And if they say, you know, yes to all those, great. You push them forward to the lead magnet. You could get tricky. And if they say no to one of them, you could send them to a different lead magnet or something like that. Don't do that right now, though. Don't keep it. Don't make it complicated. Again, I wouldn't even recommend starting here. I would recommend only placing this uh, after you've you've generated the lead, after you've gotten them to opt in and give them give you their their email address or their phone number or something. And then you can ask them like before they you either book a call with you, go to get an estimate, um, you know, buy your your product, whatever. I would I would much more prefer if you're just starting out right now uh, on, on creating an inbound marketing funnel, I would much prefer that you put this qualification process down here before they take their next action. So generate the lead real quickly, then qualify them. And it's as easy as this. Now, there's a few other things you can do too. One of my favorites is uh, when you have a, let's say it's a sales call or uh, an estimate, or they've come in for an in-person in meeting. Um, maybe you're a physical trainer and they, they've come in to uh, learn more about your process, whatever that is. Um, if it's, if it's you know, kind of more of a, a sales call environment where you've got to close the deal, one of my favorite extra qualifiers to add on here, uh, and this works really well, especially right now in, in 2023, is using the old why question. Now, this comes from, I got this from uh, uh, Chris Voss. He used to be the FBI hostage ne negotiator, you know, head of that department. Um, lo long story there. Uh, but basically, he points out they found human psychology 
we really want to avoid using why questions as much as possible, because when you say, you know, hey, why'd you do that? <laughs> Suddenly you put someone on the defense. Um, you know, if you, you walk up to someone, you, you're getting to know them and you're like, well, why do you like this kind of style of painting versus that style of painting? It immediately puts people just like on the defense. And it, but that can be used every once in a while to a really for, for a really good you know uh, purpose. And so. 90% of the time you want to avoid using why questions in your sales process on sales calls, et cetera, et cetera, except for, except for as soon as you start the call or as soon as you start that meeting, as soon as you start that sales conversation, you just want to ask, hey, why were you interested in our service? Um, so it's literally like ring, ring. Hey, John, what's going on? Awesome. We had a chat here scheduled for 3 p.m. EST. Is this a bad time? Um, cool. Well, I want to respect your time. You know, I'll, I'll just hop into it uh, real quick, just off the bat, you know, bat, do you mind uh, queuing me in? Like, why were you interested in, in our service? What we've got going on? And then just sit back and let them speak. Because what's going to happen when you ask this why question right at the beginning of your sales conversation, you're putting them on the defense. Now you notice there with my, like my tonality and everything, I didn't make it really aggressive or anything, um, but you're, you're, putting them on the defense and they have to either defend why they are interested in your product or service, which is qualifying them if they are already off the bat defending you, or very quickly, you're going to see if they choose not to defend their interest in you, you very quickly, you're going to be like, all right, this is a red flag. This, there's probably no deal on the table. This person's probably a tire kicker or probably doesn't have any budget um, or probably is going to have 50,000 objections to this thing. And I'm just going to end this call, you know, sooner than later, rest, rather than wasting, a, you know, 30 minutes uh, talking to this person. So what will happen is you'll get basically one of three responses. Either number one, they are going to just like kind of get upset and turn it around on you. So I'll put T here for like, they're just going to turn around on you and be like, well, I don't know why, you know, you tell me why I should be interested in your guys' service. All right. So that's, that's the big red flag. That's like a red light right there that you're like, all right, this person, we ain't doing business with them. This guy, he's, he's not sold on anything. He's not qualified. He's not, you know, nurtured. Um, you know, basically you, you could end the conversation there and, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now in the middle, kind of more yellow light would be someone who would say, well, I don't, I don't really know. I, I, I don't know. I just, I saw your ad or I, I saw the thing you sent me and I, I don't know. I just clicked and I just want to find out more. Okay. So they're, they're yellow, you know, that, that tells us they're, they're tire kicking. Um, and again, same thing there. I would probably end the conversation pretty quickly, um, you know, after finding out a little bit more. Um, so yeah, if they just kind of give you the whole question mark response, like, I don't know, um, you know, they're basically saying like, I don't know, you tell me, but if you don't get uh, those two responses, you're going to get the, the defense response, which is basically where they start saying like, well, I saw your ad and, you know, really appreciated what you said about using inbound marketing instead of doing cold calling. And I've been struggling a lot with this problem and, and I'm looking for some, just like immediately people are going to open up and start basically explaining why they want your service. So these two things combined, like immediately uh, this is good, just kind of like a one-two punch juggernaut sort of thing you can use to qualify leads very quickly in a, in a low labor uh, way. This is like your 80-20 principle that's just going to eliminate, you know, 80% of the waste and get 20% of the people that you want to talk to, you know, qualify them first by fi figuring out what are those two to three things they need. And then um, obviously ask them on the call, on the chat, hey, why were you interested in this in the first place? And if they start defending it in a positive way, in a, in a friendly way, um, in a way that explains their problems and how they see you as the solution, boom, you, you know you got a deal on the table and now you can do what you do best and, and sell it to them. Uh, on top of that, like I said, I, there is a third kind of way or third leg here to add that would really supercharge this and really ensure that you're getting people with buying intent coming into your pipeline in, in the first place. And so, you, you know, we've got this inbound marketing funnel that uh, you're probably working on right now. And it all depends on your traffic. Where is your traffic coming from? Um, because long term, this will hopefully nurture people, the, the emails and, you know, phone text messages and things like that you send out to nurture people long term that should be doing that but that takes a while and that's you know an art in of itself and a skill in of itself what if you started here by only attracting people who were already in a buying mode um which is actually a lot simpler and a lot cheaper than people realize um again i'll make sure this link is in the in, is in the uh chat 
my partner, Paul Murphy, he's actually got a uh, quick course here that's showing people how they can literally get free Google ads and the strength of Google. Like number one, Google's the, the number one search engine. But the thing that I love about Google versus like Facebook ads or TikTok ads or like LinkedIn, um, especially versus, you know, cold outreach like email and stuff like that, is that stuff is all basically interrupting right cold email is the most interrupting cold calling is the most interrupting because you're just being a an unwelcome pest facebook ads linkedin ads you know you're popping up in the news feed it's a step better than just like cold calling people and berating people but you're still interrupting them right they are not and they, they are on facebook to look at cat videos or whatever um and 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 they're not in the like buying mode versus google i think i was just messing around up here like you know, if I'm typing in how much is a resume service uh, or looks like, um, yeah, like affordable resume writing services, if I'm typing something like that in, man, <laughs> I'm probably looking to hire someone who's a resume writer or a career coach to help me get a job, right? And what's really crazy is looking this up right now, like this is a, a whole industry that could very quickly be dominated. Um, I think in one of my earlier videos i showed like uh what was that Hair style suits me you know just as an example here wait for my widget to load yeah i don't know what hairstyle suits me yeah so right off the bat like there are these hidden pieces parts of google that you can just very quickly create a single ad and you can just get it ranking super, super, super easy. It doesn't take any like technical know-how or anything like that. Um, again, Paul, he goes all in, in depth on how to do this, but it's it's literally, you know, like 9,900 searches per month. Um, you create something, you know, you, you, you create a little YouTube ad right there you, and, it, and it goes on Google. And so now instead of interrupting people, you're getting the 9,900 people um, you know, if you're a hairstylist, you're getting the 9,900 people who are actively searching for that right now. Um, or if you're a resume writer, you know, you get 590 people per month who are typing in, Hey, I'm looking for affordable resume. Writing. Okay. So they're looking to buy something. Um, and you can obviously noodle around with this too, because, you know, maybe you're like, well, I don't want someone who's looking for affordable resume writing service. Okay. So you, you do a little bit of uh, searching there and, and figure out, okay, what are my one to two, two to three qualifications here? So maybe they need to be a, a senior level, uh, employee at a larger firm. Okay. So, okay. You make a, an ad that specifically talks to those people. And the nice thing about this system is it's not like Facebook ads where it's, you know, breaking down and, and everything like that. You can see these guys, they've got stuff that have been up for years. Um, 2017, like this, this gal right here, she is just eating up all of this traffic all day long. And again, I bet you anything, when you click on it, you, you click on her video, she does not offer people a lead magnet um, or she does not offer people a call to action, like booking a, an actual appointment with her. Um, so she's probably leaving all sorts of money on the table and it's a tragedy. And we should definitely get this over to her um, so she can start using it. But you can start using it too. Super, super, super simple. Um, but like I said, that's really what it comes down to qualification process. What are those two to three things that are going to qualify people? Once you get them into your pipeline, if you have a, like a sales conversation with them, you can supercharge it by asking them like, Hey, why were you interested in this service? If they start defending what you're doing, then boom, you're off to the races. You know, you can close that deal real easy. Um, spend all your time with those people. And then if you really want to supercharge it at the end of the day, just attract the right people from, from the beginning, attract the people who are using keywords that show they are, they have buying intent. They're not just tire kicking right now. They actually want to buy this service uh, today and they're looking to move forward. Um, and there's billions of people on the earth, which means that there are thousands of people searching for your service, whether it's B2B, B2C, um, if it's a physical product, whatever it is, they, you know, those people are out there and they're actively searching and, um, you know, it's real easy for you to slide in front of the momentum there. So that's basically what I've got for you guys today. My next video coming up, if uh, you hit the bell and subscribe so you don't miss out on it, we're, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of using social media for inbound marketing specifically and why it's important to have a strategy that's time and cost effective because that's what this is all about, right? So hit the bell, subscribe. I'll see you uh, on the next video where we just dive deep on, okay, how important is social media for inbound marketing? Until then, stay awesome.